Welcome to the CSS channel. Our topic for today is cannabis in sports and how athletes try to cheat drug tests for it. My name is Abuzar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Action. For today, I have prepared a few interesting slides for you. Let's go with the slides. Cannabis in sports and how athletes try to cheat drug tests for it. Cannabis plant contains two types of chemicals, cannabinoids and non-cannabinoids. As you can see on the slides, there are about 100 cannabinoids and about 300 non-cannabinoids. Among cannabinoids, two famous ones are tetrahydrocannabinol, which is famous as THC, and cannabidiol or CBD. THC has strong psychoactive effects. Basically, it is THC that makes someone high when they take cannabis products, but CBD has no psychoactive effects. As per Section S8 of the prohibited list published by the WADA World Anti-Doping Agency, cannabinoids are prohibited in competition only, unlike anabolic steroids and peptide hormones that they are prohibited in competition and out of competition. All natural cannabinoids are prohibited except cannabidiol. So CBD is not prohibited in sports because it doesn't have any psychoactive effects. All synthetic THCs are prohibited. Synthetic cannabinoids that mimic the effects of THC are also prohibited. Synthetic cannabinoids are also known as synthetic marijuana, spice, and K2, and they mimic the effects of THC. There is a long list of them, and here are the famous one, HU210. This is a synthetic analog of THC. It was first synthesized in 1988 and considered to have a potency of at least 100 times that of THC. You are 144. JWH, this is created uh, in 1994 by Dr. John W. Hoffman for studies of the cannabinoid receptors, AM694, AM2201, RCS4, RCS8, 5FADB, and the last one is called Camille Pagaclon. Camille Pagaclon emerged in late 2016 on German drug market, and actually in 2019, Sweden has categorized it as a narcotic uh, substance. Cannabis derivatives. Two famous derivatives of cannabis are marijuana and hashish. Marijuana basically is the dried leaves and flowering parts of the plant, but hashish is the dried resin from the plant. Based on medical uh, references, the concentration of THC in marijuana can vary from 3% to 15%, and also based on those references, the concentration of THC in hashish is 3 to 6%, even though based on certain articles, the concentration of THC in hashish can be very, very higher. How athletes are tested for detection of THC? THC, which is the major psychoactive chemical in cannabis, will be rapidly metabolized to inactive metabolite tetrahydrocannabinol carboxylic acid. In general, urine is the best sample to look for THC metabolite. However, it can be detected in blood, hair, and saliva as well. The eight factors that affect the detection of THC in the body. Number one, dose of THC consumed. Number two, frequency of use. Number three, route of consumption. Number four, body fat. This is important to know that THC is highly lipid soluble. It will be rapidly taken up by fat tissues while it will be accumulated. So those people, they have high percentage of body fat or they are obese should keep in mind that THC can stay in their bodies for a long period of time. Number five, genetics and metabolism. Number six, types of drug tests. Number seven, hydration. Number eight, exercise. This slide shows detection windows for THC. As you can see on this slide, in urine, THC can be detected for up to 20 to 30 days. 
in single dose three days moderate dose four times per week five to seven days daily use 10 to 14 days and in uh, chronic heavy use 30 days and in blood up to 12 hours in hair up to three months and in saliva up to 24 hours cutoff level for thc cutoff level is a level above which the concentration of thc will be considered a positive test the world anti-doping agency wara has not published the cutoff level for thc however in the past the cutoff level for thc was 15 nanograms per ml in sports and in medical references it is 50 could be anywhere between 20 to 100 nanograms per ml one of the questions that we get a lot is this can you have false positives for thc the answer is yes let's see the reasons number one cbd or cannabidiol as we discussed before cbd is not prohibited in sports unfortunately most cbd products contain thc and just because cbd and thc have very identical chemical structures this is why if you are taking cbd for any reasons you might have positive tests for thc this is why if you are taking uh, cbd for medical purposes you should report at the doping control station this is the chemical structures for cbd and thc and as you can see they are very identical number two hemp containing foods hemp containing foods can cause false positive for thc in urine tests some of those foods we have listed in here they are hulled hemp seed they are famous also as hemp hearts hemp seed oil hemp seed milk hemp flour also known as seed cake and hemp protein powder number three proton pump inhibitors proton pump inhibitors uh, are a group of medications that are prescribed usually for stomach acidity peptic ulcer acid reflux etc and here are the examples isomeprazole or nexium lanzoprazole omeprazole and pantoprazole so if you're taking any of these medications for some sort of stomach issue gi issue during your competition you should report at the doping control station number four there are also other medications that can cause false positives for thc and we have listed them in here for you dronabinol or marinol this medication is used usually to treat you know feeling nauseous and vomiting during chemotherapy for cancers and also this medication is used to stimulate appetite in patients with hiv aids and cancer the second medication is effavirenz or sastiva this medication is also used to treat hiv and the famous painkillers ibuprofen or advil naproxen and diclofenac so if you are taking any of these medications for any reasons you should report them when you are at the doping control station what happens when you are at the doping control station you will be asked to provide a urine sample of at least 90 ml you will be asked to roll up your sleeves up to the elbows and also a doping control officer or a witnessing chaperone of the same gender will directly observe the urine collection process this is to prevent cheating how athletes try to cheat drug tests for thc number one urine substitution that means submitting a urine sample that is not yours this could be a synthetic urine or someone else's urine even though this type of cheating has been done many times in the past but these days uh, this is almost impossible because a doping control officer will watch you at every single move you make at the doping control station two urine dilution we have two types of urine dilution pre-collection dilution and post-collection dilution in pre-collection dilution athletes will consume large quantities of fluids before collecting the sample and in post-collection dilution they try to add fluids to the sample after collecting it 
But how are diluted urine samples diagnosed? They're gonna run two validated tests on all urine samples. Number one, measuring urine creatinine level. If the creatinine level in your urine sample is less than 20 milligrams per deciliter, it will be considered dilute. And another alternative test is measuring urine specific gravity. It is also known as urine density. Basically, this test shows the concentration of all chemical particles in the urine. The normal range for uh, urine specific gravity is 1.005 to 1.03. And if the specific gravity in your urine sample is less than 1.005, it will be considered dilute. Three, urine adulteration. That means manipulating a urine sample by adding exogenous chemicals or adulterants or masking agents. Athletes may try to adulter their urine samples in two different ways. A, attempt to change urine pH by adding ammonia, baking soda, bleach, citric acid, laundry detergents, and table salt. B. Attempts to destroy drug metabolites in urine or confuse GCMS by adding the followings. GCMS stands for Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. This is a highly sophisticated machine to detect drug metabolites in urine. Soap. Iodized table salt. As you know, iodine is an oxidizing agent which may mask the detection of THC in urine by confusing the GCMS machine. Toilet bowl cleaners, glutheraldehyde. Glutheraldehyde actually is a kind of disinfectant used in hospitals and medical facilities to sterilize surgical instruments. It is interesting to know that the effects of glutheraldehyde on urine cannot be reversed. Credinium chlorochromate or PCC. PCC is a potent oxidizing agent. This particular chemical can compromise the GCMS machine for detecting THC and narcotics. Potassium nitrite and sodium nitrite. They are also oxidizing agents. Sometimes they might be used as food additives. These two chemicals can also compromise the GCMS machine. Add in pineapple or papaya juices and proteolytics enzymes such as bromelain, natokinase, and pepsin. It is important to know that taking digestive enzymes in oral form is not prohibited in sports. However, if you try to add digestive enzymes, especially proteolytic enzymes, into your urine, this will be considered a doping violation. For blood tampering to change drug metabolites in urine, athletes may try different strategies. A. Drinking vinegar or cranberry juice. This doesn't help at all. B. Consuming large doses of niacin or vitamin B3. This doesn't help either. C. Taking creatine supplements to increase creatinine levels in urine. There are controversial reports that high levels of creatinine in urine may mask the detection of THC. And finally, Zoc Combo, zinc, oral contraceptive pills, and creatinine. There is no report or study on this combo whether it works or not. However, it is trending somehow among those people who have to provide urine sample for THC detection. Actually, in 2011, researchers at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in the U.S. reported that zinc supplements can mask detection of THC in urine. However, two years later, in 2013, a study at the University of Utah proved that that is not true at all. At the Canadian Academy of Sport Edition, we provide consultation about weight loss solutions, obesity medicine, childhood obesity, sport nutrition, fitness nutrition, and medicinal nutrition. Feel free to contact us at 647-847-9818 or you can email us at info at 
I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next videos, you may subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.